What's up, everybody? We are so glad that you are here. The uh, the cameraman is going to get from my belly and, uh, and move all the way out. And uh, hey, we are glad that you are here, that you have arrived. I see uh, a bunch of you that are on, uh, looking to see what's up, Matthew and Hannah and Abby and uh, Z Dog. Everybody knows who Z Dog is. Say it out loud. Yep, everybody got it right. Good job. Jay. Way to go, Jay Sharp. All right. Hey, uh, we are glad that you guys are here and on. We are another week on YouTube Live. Like, I cannot wait till we are back together and hanging out and chilling and uh, giving you side hugs and high fives and fist bumps. And I'm beating you in all the crazy little games that we play when we can, like, I don't know, push hands against each other and all kinds of random stuff. One day we're going to be back. But, uh, but until then, we get to rock out with, uh, with YouTube Live again. So again, so grateful for you to decide to hang out with us. I know that you guys have uh, been watching screens uh, a lot. All right, so here's what I want you to do. If your homework is done for the day, I want you to raise your hand. Good, all right, I like it. That's not everybody. I see a lot of sixth and seventh graders with their homework done, but my eighth graders seem like... Uh, they're, they're not into it. Uh, I was laughing today. Uh, I, I, I noticed and saw that uh, when Mason Classical Academy, when, when you guys, when you guys hop on your, uh, your, your live chats and all those things, you still got to wear your like uniform and stuff. Uh, that's kind of funny. I'll still wear my jammies and all that kind of stuff on mine. So, uh, so we'll have a little fun. All right. Hey, uh, here's what we're going to do to start today. Uh, just for a little bit of fun. We're gonna shoot some. Uh, uh, we're gonna show you some video. We got. I love nailed it and failed it. All right. It's a little bit of fun. So uh, since I know that everybody is missing sports. All right. When I say everybody, that includes the guys and the girls. All right. Uh, I know that everybody is missing sports. So I've got a nailed it or failed it slam and dunk basketball edition. So what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna put on here. All right, you're going to want me to decide you write nailed it or failed it on the screen on the little chat deal, all right? So here we go. Watch these players and decide if they're going to nail it or fail it. All right, here we go. So number one, let's see. Oh, at home, here we go. All right, is that dude going to nail it or fail it? He looks a little off, all right? He looks like he's, uh, he's, he's already at the peak of his height. Like, I don't know if he can get any more, all right? Dominic's over here thinking he's got it with his thumbs up. All right, looks like everybody in my house right now says thumbs up. All right, here we go. Survey says. Let's go. Let's go. Y'all yeah, right, he nailed it. Way to go. Super impressive, super impressive. I'm going to walk across the screen and get to the other side just for fun. I know that's super awkward. All right, here we go. Number two. Woo! Oh, oh, he already got some hops, didn't he? He got some hops, but is his head going to hit the rim and not be able to get it? All right, so give me a nailed it or a failed it. You can also do a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you are real quick on the emoji. All right, this dude seems like he's getting after it, but I'm going to go with it. with it. What do you guys think? Nailed it or failed it? Say it out loud. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Lots of people said nailed it. You guys say it out loud too. All right, here we go. Survey says... Boom, got it, got it. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll stop that one real quick before YouTube does not like that song and uh, kicks, me, kicks me off of uh, YouTube Live. All right, here we go, number three. Uh-oh, look at him, look at him. Oh, all right, all right. All right, what do you guys think, nailed it or failed it? Failed it. Lots of people say failed it. Look, I'm looking at him and he looks like he's doing a good job. But there's no way they're going to do three nailed it in a row because the whole purpose of this, of fun, is to watch people screw up, right? Like, let's just be real, all right? Here we go. Nailed it. I'm going to go nailed it, though, because he looks like he's up there. All right, here we go. Survey says. Oh, yeah. He's so got this. Oh! oh, oh. Ah. Wow! Oh, no. That was unexpected in that moment. Wow, all right, here's what we know. He could have made it. Like, he got the hops. All right, here we go. 
So uh, I want you to mark down, write the text if you've gotten them all right so far. All right, here we go. Number next. Well, somebody's yelling already. Oh! He had some, uh, I'm trying to figure out what he had underneath of there. Like right, he had some mulch or sand or something like that. Uh, but look, I was watching and his foot was like down here. It wasn't even on top. Like, this is not going to be good. Definitely failed it. Everybody says failed it? All right, but everybody everybody wants to watch the failed it. All right, here we go. The survey says, watch his foot. It never, oh! That was fun. Let's just watch that one again. Failed it. Watch his foot. Oh! <laughs> All right, here we go. We're halfway done. Nailed it or failed it. Basketball dunk edition. Number six. Number six. Five. Ooh, he looks like a professional, though. All right, what do you guys think? Nailed it or failed it? In here, what do you think? Nailed it? Nailed it. How many of you say failed nailed it? it. Uh, we got everybody with nailed it up in here. He looks like a professional, so let's see. I'm going nailed it as well. Here we go. Ooh! Ooh! There it is. He got hops like uh, Pastor Andy Wells. That's all I'm saying. All right, he got hops like Pastor Andy. All right. So, all right, number next, nailed it or failed it. What do you guys think? If you actually think that she is going to get that, you've got some serious problems. But everybody wants to watch her fall, right? Like that's kind of how this thing works. All right, here we go. Survey says. Oh! 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 1888orthodontist.com right there. Wow, she knocked her teeth out. All right, here we go. Number next. Nailed it or failed it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. All right. That's hopefully that's... I'm going to talk really loud so the YouTube doesn't like that music. All right. So, uh, yeah, that does... That... I don't know. Look, he is flying from Michael Jordan area right here. All right. What do you guys think? Nailed it? Failed it. Failed it. Everybody says failed it. All right. What do you guys think? Nailed it or failed it? Survey says... Hey, I'm actually going to talk during this whole deal so that uh, YouTube doesn't like it. All right, so let's see. Oh, not even close. But does it go in anyway? Does it go in anyway? Does it go in? Oh, it does not go in anyway. So sad. So sad. Failed it. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go two more of these. All right, let's do two more of these. All right, here we go. Number next. Four the taps. Four the taps. He said four the taps. But look how low the basketball goal is. But the, yeah, the basketball's gonna go behind him. He's, he's gotta be able to get I'm going I'm going nailed it. How many say nailed it? What do you guys think? Yeah, nailed it? Yeah. Alright, how many of you say failed it? Alright, on the screen, what do you think? I got some thumbs down on this one. Alright, here we go. Survey says. He's gotta make this one. Oh I'm counting it! He's trying to get into the finals. I'm counting it. I'm counting it. All right, here we go. Last one. We're going to see if you got them all right. If you get them all right, you got a special surprise at your house waiting just for you. All right, here we go. Last one. Bro, they are laughing at him already. That's not even close. All right, that's definitely going to be a failure, but I'm, I'm hoping for an epic failure right here. Epic failure. Here we go. Survey says... Come on, give me an epic failure. Or rise up. What if he rises up? It would be funnier if it hit his head. All right, that was not an epic failure, but, uh, but that, was pretty much, that was pretty much a failure. So, hey, all right, guys, we are um, we're going to do a couple more things here in just a second, but I did kind of want to start us off. I like to kind of split my lesson up a little bit here and there, but I just kind of want to do an opening. Um, we have been doing a series called The Making of a King, and, uh, and we are th our third week into The Making of a King. And so we're going to talk about 
uh, David again tonight. And uh, maybe by my opening story, all right, you're going to kind of know where we're headed uh, with King David. Uh, but uh, there was one time when I was in school, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was like upper elementary school, maybe fourth or fifth grade. I'm trying to remember the exact year, but I can't remember the exact year. And uh, I did not do so well in my report card. Now, this report card, it's a lot different. Like you guys, you get... Uh, most of your stuff is online already, right? So it's online, and your parents can kind of check up with your grades all year long. And then by the time they get to a report card, like your parents already know pretty much where you're at. But back in the day, that's not how it worked. Like every quarter is when a report card would be sent home, and it would have to be signed, all right? So I did not do so well, and I was very, very nervous, and I was very scared. And so I literally... Uh, hit it and I actually signed it um, and then I was like okay this isn't going to be good and I kind of left uh, the uh, I left it with my parents but I hid in my closet like my closet uh, but then kind of had this up part of my closet where you kind of put you know whatever games or stuff on the top I shut my door and hid up in the corner and put like blankets and stuff on me because I was trying to hide from kind of mistakes and sins and things that I had. I didn't do so well. I didn't study like I should have and uh, did not do so. I was trying to hide my sins, right? Tonight we're going to talk about David and a little bit of him hiding a little bit of his sin, all right? All right, so speaking of hiding your sins, Seth George last week, uh, Seth George, um, He won, but he didn't win. So he actually got the wrong answer. Thankfully, thankfully in the wrong answer, the Lord just kind of knew and set all of this up and uh, he got the wrong answer. So his thing, uh, his prize that he got was actually where he was going to be egged. All right. And so he got egged and uh, I think we get, we get to watch this video of him being egged. Let's see it. So, uh, so Seth got egged. He did not make the right choice. And actually, from what I gather from that video, um, from what I've heard, they actually egged him one time, but they forgot to hit record and had to egg him a second time, which I think is absolutely hilarious. And uh, we should have done that. Hey, FYI, in case you're wondering, the couch is clean, okay? The couch is clean. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. You can't tell, all right? I'm not in any trouble, all right. Thankfully, uh, our couch cushion got clean. All right. So uh, here's this activity I want to do real quick. All right. I've seen some of this stuff uh, all over social media, and it's called your quarantine house. Okay. Your quarantine house. So what I did was I created three different houses. All right. That you had to be quarantined with. If you had to do the whole month, month and a half, who knows, seven months, however long this thing is going to go. If you had to be quarantined, who would you be quarantined with and what you would be quarantined with? So I have three houses. All right. So let's go over these three houses and I want you to put who you want to be quarantined with. All right. So here we go. All right. House number one, you could be with Pastor Andy. Your food the whole time would be pizza. You get to hang out with Kanye West. All right? The sport, the only thing you're allowed to do and play in sport-wise is basketball. Um, But even though you got Kanye West and Pastor Andy, country music is the only deal that you can do. All right? Um, And then you have Disney Plus to be able to hang out with and chill with. All right? So if you're Pastor Andy's house, I want you to put a house number one. House number two. This is Pastor Greg's house. I get to hang out with Pastor Greg. If you don't know who that is, that's the guy talking. All right. Uh, Chick-fil-A, you get Chick-fil-A to eat. Uh, You get Chris Pratt. All right, at your house. If you don't know who he is, he's like the coolest of all of the Avengers. Or maybe not the coolest. He's probably the worst of all the Avengers. But he's still an Avenger, and he can save the day if need be. All right. Uh, You can do soccer. Uh, the only music we're allowed to listen to is show tunes, and the only thing we're allowed to watch is Netflix. All right, so do you want house number two with Pastor Greg or house number three? 
You get our interim senior pastor, Dr. Aiken. You get ice cream unlimited and calories mean nothing with it, all right? You get to hang out with Tim Tebow, all right? And you can play football, all right? You can't play baseball with him. He's not that good at it, but we won't tell him that, all right? Unless you want to argue with that, all right? Uh, you get to hang out with Tim Tebow, play football. The only music is opera at that house, but you have a Nintendo Switch with all unlimited games on the Nintendo Switch, all right? So, uh, which house do you want? House one, Pastor Andy. House two, Pastor Greg. House three, Dr. Aiken. All right, so let's just go uh, for those of you that are just happen to be sitting here in my house. What do you guys think? Three, one, one, three. I got two threes, two ones, a three. Nobody wants to hang out with Pastor Greg Everybody and Chris else. Pratt. All right, so you guys want, uh, I see a bunch of, let's go. Let's go Chick-fil-A and soccer, all right? So house two, so pick your house, and uh, that's what you get to get. I don't know if that's kind of fun or not, but I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was pretty even, all right? Uh, Pastor Andy was a little upset that he got pizza. He really wanted Chipotle, uh, but listen, you can't have everything that you want, all right? Uh, if you want to... Uh, when we're done tonight, uh, you can shoot me a text or an email what your actual house would be. I don't want you to do it now because I'm about to go into a little bit more of my lesson. And uh, if all you do is spend your whole time text chatting, then you're missing my lesson. All right. So, uh, so there you go. Quarantine house. Uh, I actually choose uh, house number three because I would love to uh, just hang out with Dr. Aiken and Tim Tebow. Uh, and I think that would be hilarious. And uh, I would love to see Tim Tebow, like, just starting to do opera and stuff like that. Like, I think that would be, that would be fun. And then I would whoop them all on uh, Mario Kart in the Switch. So that would be my life, and I'd be good and set and, uh, and ready to go. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the making of a king. And in order to do that, so I can pick up my Bible and stuff, uh, let's watch the intro. Bible and some of my notes and stuff like that. So uh, the making of a king, we are in week three and we are talking about David. And so we're going to fast forward into our third week here where David is actually king now. Okay. And, uh, and David ends up in a moment where he may sort of slightly be quarantined to his house. All right. His, uh, um, uh, the, the people that are underneath of him, they're actually at war in this particular moment. Okay. They're at war. He's in his house. He has sent out all of his warriors and all of these things to kind of go to war. And, uh, and, and, and something kind of happens. All right? He was kind of by himself. And uh, he, he begins to make some really bad decisions. Okay? And then when he makes these bad decisions, he begins, to, uh, he begins to try to hide them. right? He begins to have these sins and he hides them. So a lot of you know the story, but uh, I guess he's, he's on his palace and he's, he's on the top roof of his palace kind of a deal. And uh, he looks out over his uh, kind of over the town area. And uh, he sees this woman named Bathsheba, and she was taking a bath. Now listen, I don't understand English enough and going back and forth to really know why they named her Bathsheba. Like, could they not have come up with another name? Seriously, like, she was taking a bath, her name is Bathsheba. Like, is that, was her name really Sheba? And they added bath to it just, just for fun so everybody can kind of remember her name? Like, I'm trying to figure this out, but... But anyway, he sees Bathsheba. Bathsheba is the wife of Uriah. But David um, was quarantined, started to, uh, uh, all of the peeps weren't around. And he's like, you know what, I, I want to have a, I I'm going to make some bad decisions here in this moment. And so he goes and uh, he, he has them go get Bathsheba and bring him over to his palace. 
and uh, this person, Bathsheba, was not his wife, all right, somebody else's wife, but, but he made some really bad decisions that night and uh, ends up getting her pregnant, tries to hide it, tries to do everything he could to hide it. He's like, look, this is not going to happen, and he tries to end up getting, uh, tries to end up having uh, uh, Bathsheba's husband come back and try to see if, if, uh, if, if he could get her pregnant, to kind of hide the fact that, that, that David got him pregnant, right? And begins to do this, and, and Uriah is an upstanding man. He goes, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I am not going to participate in that. Like, like all of these people are at war, and I'm supposed to be at battle too, and, and I need to go be there. And so David, trying to hide his sin, sends Uriah back to battle, but instead of Uriah being in his normal spot, being in charge, he, he sends directions to have Uriah go to the front lines and then when he gets to the front lines he puts these directions to have all the people who are on the front lines with Uriah back up well, what do you think is going to happen Uriah can be really strong Uriah can be really great he can be super awesome but when everybody else backs up Uriah ends up dying and he was killed and, and David by trying to hide his sin with Bathsheba kept compiling sin after sin after sin on top of this. And there becomes a moment in life where he gets confronted. Okay, a prophet named Nathan comes and he confronts David. And here's what I want to, what I want to kind of talk about a little bit, okay? All of us have moments where we realize our sin, whether, whether the Holy Spirit convicts us and we, we feel really bad about it, whether, whether a parent um, catches you in a sin, uh, whether a sibling catches you in a sin, maybe a teacher has caught you cheating, and you get into this moment and, and you've got to make some decisions. Do I continue down the path of, of, of keeping this stuff and the sin in the dark and kind of making these mistakes, or do I bring the sin into the light and try to clean it and cleanse it and, and overcome it? And what you'll see is David was considered by God a man after God's own heart. Wait, how can, how can David be a man after God's own heart? Well, he can be a man after God's own heart because of how he responded in his sin. Listen, we all sin. We all make mistakes. But it's once you're in that sin, how do you respond? Do you respond with continuing to try to cover it up, continuing to try to hide it? Or you say, you know what? I need to have this come to light. So let me encourage you to do what David did. And I'm going to read a little bit about what David did. I want to encourage you in this moment. I want you to think about it. wherever you're sitting right now. I don't care if your parents are there, your brother or sister are there. If you're sitting here watching this by yourself, I want you to think about it. The Holy Spirit's probably already convicting you right now of specific sins that are secret, that nobody knows about, that you've been trying to hide. You've been, you've been trying to cover it up. The key is getting, them, getting that kind of thing out of the light. Because once it comes out of the light, then you're, you're able to be used by God a lot more. So uh, what David does, and, and David, because he, he likes to write a lot and, and likes to do songs. So Psalm 51 is kind of this, uh, where he writes this prayer to God. And I would encourage you, like if you've got sin in your life, that you're like, I, I, need, to, I need to get the sin into the light. I, I need, I need this, this sin to be forgiven. Uh, I would encourage you to go to Psalm chapter 51. And, uh, and David says this. Okay. Um, Psalm 51. He says this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Right? That's, transgressions are like sin. Right? God, God, have mercy on me. Blot out my sins. Right? Wash me thoroughly. From my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Listen, I, I know for some of you that's you. Like you keep going back to that sin. It's ever before you. It's always in the forefront of your mind, right? Right? It says, it says, wash me thoroughly, cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight, you delight in truth 
in the inward be, and you teach me wisdom in the secret part. Verse 7 says this. All right, verse 7 says this. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Right? Let me, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bone, right? So let there be joy and gladness. In other words, like sometimes your sin eats you alive. He goes, look, I, I, I need the joy and the gladness again. I need to feel. What's happened was he, he started to feel far away from God. It's, it's real easy to feel far away from God when you're sinning. And he said, listen, I need to come back to you. I need to feel that joy. I need to feel that gladness. Hide your, your, your uh, face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And in verse 10, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Listen, if you've got, if you've got some sin issues and stuff in your life, some, some sins, maybe it started out as lies and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, whatever the deal is for you, all right? In, in order to really be used by God, you've got you've to let the dark places come to the light and let, let, let yourself be healed uh, in these moments, okay? Uh, I'm going to give a, a practical application in just a second on, on how to make sure you do that. But just for fun, here's what I want to do. All right? Just for fun, because I, I wanted to have a little fun. And I thought I was going to get a couple of these, and I got a lot of them that are really good. So here's what I did. I got uh, some of our adult leaders, to get, our, our Wednesday night adult leaders, to give us, to give me two truths and a lie, all right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read two truths and a lie, and I want you to put on uh, on the te- on the the uh, YouTube chat who you think it is. Okay, I want you to put who you think it is. So we'll see. All right, here we go. So the first one, here's I'm going to give you three. Two truths and a lie. You figure out it is. All right, here we go. This person was the first person in their family to go to college. This person hates roller coasters. And this person has the same birthday as their dad. All right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you three choices. Because it's just hard to pick that from a million Wednesday night leaders. Okay? I'm going to give you three choices. So, again, I'm going to say it again. First person in their family to go to college. First, uh, this person hates roller coasters. And uh, this person and their dad has the same birthday. All right, so your options are, all right, your options are, let's go with Angelo Vlahakis, all right, with Angelo Vlahakis, uh, Tanya Haskins, okay, or uh, Marco Jerry, all right, Marco Jerry, Tanya Haskins, or Angelo Vlahakis. All right, I want you to put which, all right. Wait, I, no, I have to tell, wait, I did that all wrong. Where's my people at to help me? I was wondering what you were doing. All right, I did that completely wrong. Sorry, I apologize. This is what we call live YouTube television. I am wrong and I'm sorry. All right, the person actually is Tanya Haskins. All right, so which one is she, did she, which one's the lie? All right, we're going to get this right, and then we're going to do a bunch of them. All right, here we go. Which one is the lie from Tanya Haskins? All right, uh, first person in her family to go to college, she hates roller coasters, and uh, my dad and I have the same birthday. So which one is the lie? All right, my bad, I completely messed up, but we'll fix it all for the future. All right, I messed up. So everybody's like, what in the world? Yes, people are... Sorry, they're all picking like which one it is. No, it's two truths and a lie. I messed up. So which one is the mistake? All right. So I'm going to go with the mistake was. All right, you're all going to write it down. So actually the lie is I hate roller coasters because she loves roller coasters. All right. So that's the lie. She loves roller coasters. All right, here we go. The next one, Renee Arnold. Which one is the lie for Renee Arnold? All right, first job at 18 was working at a recycle phosphate plant. I have no idea what that is. The second one is uh, my husband uh, was my first boyfriend at age 23. She could have been a player and that could be a lie. Who knows? Or I met Andrea Bocelli 
uh, while one time while on a trip in Italy. Ooh. All right, so which one is a lie? I am going to go, you, so people back here think she was a playa playa, and uh, Ron was not her first. All right, uh, I think, actually I know the answer. So the answer actually is the third one. Uh, she um, never met um, Andrea Bocelli, but she did live in Italy. So that one is a lie. All right, let's go with her husband, Ron. All right, her husband, Ron. Here we go. Um, one, was he born and raised in Las Vegas? Born and raised in Las Vegas. Two, dropped out of community college uh, uh, to start a rap career. And if you see him with his flat bill caps and stuff, he's kind of an Andy Wells wannabe in that, right? And so uh, uh, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and he met and, got, or he met and got an autograph from Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. All right? So is it uh, born and raised in Vegas, dropped out of community college to start a rap career, or uh, met and got an autograph from Muhammad Ali? One, two, or three. All right. The answer is, all right, he didn't drop out to start a rap career, but I wish he did, because that would have been super, super awesome. All right, so that's Renee and Ron Arnold. All right, here we go. Ooh, Jason Dean. Jason Dean's got some good ones. Everybody likes Jason Dean. All right, here we go. My first job was an amusement park in Naples. All right, so his first job was working at an amusement park in Naples. All right, um, I've been to the White House and met the president, and I once had my bike stolen for a day. All right, so is it number one, number two, or number three? Which one is the lie? All right, here's what I'll tell you. The White House is true, and it was President Bill Clinton, and uh, Bill Clinton was on crutches, Probably because Jason beat him in a game of football or basketball, but uh, but uh, he did do that, and he did have his bike stolen for a day. He did not work in an amusement park in Naples because there are no amusement parks in Naples. King Richards? King Richards? No idea. All right, let's go with Ashley Dean, Jason's wife, Ashley Dean. Here we go. Hers is kind of a theme right here. All right, Ashley's is a theme. All right. And Ashley, if you're watching, I changed some of the language up a little bit just for fun. All right, here we go. Ashley Dean, which one is the lie? I have had six lungs in my body. My first surgery, I was the surgeon's first patient. Or I spent a lot of time in the hospital throughout my life with my brother. So let me repeat those again because they're all kind of the same. I have had six lungs in my body. My first surgery, I was the surgeon's first patient. And I spent a lot of time in the hospital throughout my life with my brother. All right, you guys out here in the actual audience, what do you think? What's your lie? They think three. They think three is the lie? No. All right. No. You guys think two is the lie? Oh, Dominic thinks number one is the lie. All right, Ashley Dean has had six lungs in her body. So, that is true. Uh, the other true is she spent a lot of time in the hospital with her brother. The lie is her first surgery was the surgeon's first patient, which would have been crazy. All right, here we go. Miss Naomi Lehman. She doesn't really work on Wednesday nights because she's in Awana, but all of you know who she is. She's my new admin assistant. I thought it would be fun to get to know her. All right, here we go. Number one, which is the lie? Dropped out of high school. Number two, amputated someone's leg. Number three, was a volunteer firefighter. All right, look, if she was a volunteer firefighter, then she could have easily amputated someone's leg. So number one would be the one. All right, Naomi, why don't you say it out loud? Which one is the lie? Number three, she was not a volunteer firefighter. I was an EMT. But she, but, but she apparently did help amputate someone's leg. So just FYI, if we end up getting a chance to go to camp and something happens, we have a someone who can help. Someone who can help do that. All right, here we go. Marco Jerry. Marco Jerry. Marco, we're going to miss you. Here we go. Three things, two truths, and a lie. Which one is the lie? 
Marco, you have one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. Now, if any of adults are watching this, this makes sense to you and teach your kids what that means, okay? One degree of separation from Kevin Bacon means he's related really close to Kevin Bacon, all right? All right, Kevin Bacon was a famous actor at one point, all right? It's like being uh, related to Thor or something like that, all right? So uh, one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. Number two, because his name is Marco, he was named after a great explorer and lover of pasta, all right? Number three, delivered two babies in the back of an ambulance. All right, this person, Marco and Naomi, apparently could hang out together. They could deliver babies and they can, uh, and they can cut people's legs off, all right? Maybe it was the same patient, I don't know. All right, so which one do you think is the lie? Apparently, he is only one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. That's crazy. Uh, apparently, he did deliver two babies in the back of an ambulance. Uh, but no, he was not named after the great explorer and lover of pasta. He was not named after Marco Polo, which is what you play in the uh, deal. All right, so uh, great explorer is the lie. All right, Angelo Vlahakis. All right, Angelo Vlahakis. His are really good. This one's really confusing. All right, here we go. Which one is the lie? Number one, while sightseeing in Paris, he and his wife saw loose bolts in the Eiffel Tower. They discreetly took them out and then took them home to their kids as souvenirs. <laughs> Number one. Number two, he met, hung out with, and had tea with Leonard Nimoy, a.k.a. Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Or number three, his job at one point was teaching uh, Harley Davidson owners how to properly ride their motorcycles. So which one is the lie? All right, here's what I'll tell you. I have seen him ride a motorcycle. So that one is true. All right. Uh, he is cool enough to hang out with Leonard Nimoy, so Leonard Nimoy is true. What is the lie is sightseeing in Paris, finding loose bolts. Apparently, they did actually um, uh, fib to their kids and got some bolts from Home Depot and took it to their kids and told them that they, and actually gave them. Oh, wait, was I supposed to say that out loud? Sorry, Mia, uh, Mia, if you're watching, your parents didn't lie to you, I promise. It's a real bolt, not from Home Depot. I may have given that away and I wasn't supposed to. Alexander, I'm so sorry. All right, here we go. And mine, just for fun. Uh, when I was a kid, my family owned six dogs, and all of them we named Tempo. I accidentally, that's number one. Number two, I accidentally bumped into uh, a vice president of the United States. And number three, I've been halfway up Mount Everest. Which one is the lie? Can you repeat number one? All right. Can I repeat them? I'll repeat them. Number one, when I was a kid, we owned six dogs. All of them were named Tempo. Number two, I accidentally bumped into the vice president of the United States. Or number three, I've been halfway up Mount Everest. All right, here we go. What do you think? Sophie says two... Halfway up, yes. not all the way. No, no, you can't change it. You have all right, you're going three, Mount Everest. What do you got? You got number one. So we got we got a bunch of different ones here. All right. I have owned six, or uh, we did own six dogs when I was a kid, and yes, all of them were named Tempo. My parents didn't want to get confused and uh, didn't want to have different names, and so we named Tempo. Most of them were like little two, three, four, five weekers because I didn't like them as kids, and then we got one that stuck named Tempo. I finally left the house, and they got a new dog named Allegra. And uh, 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 because these are musical terms, Tempo and Allegra, because my parents were musical. Um, I did accidentally bump into Dan Quayle, Vice President of the United States. Uh, I did accidentally bump into him. Uh, we both actually were backwards, and we bumped into each other. And next thing I knew, I had like 15 uh, s security between us 
Uh, and no, I have not been halfway up Mount Everest, even though I have never told you I've been halfway up Mount Everest. I just swear you told us that you No. Nope. Now, normally I say things like, uh, true, I have truth. I have uh, fallen down the Great Wall of China. That's true. Um, I have been spelunking in Slovenia. That is true. And uh, as of this year, I've been swimming with sharks. Okay, with sharks. So those are some random true things about me. All right, here we go. And uh, to kind of finish off, uh, we read a little bit in, uh, in Psalm 51 um, about, uh, about David's kind of confessional. Okay, so my final application point is this. Um, write down a confession. Okay, if there is some sort of sin, some sort of something that is just has eaten you alive, and you need to get it out. Number one, I think you need to, you need to write it out. Like if it's just in your head, I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. It doesn't work so much. God talks about letting things come into light and that, that begins the healing process, okay? So get it out. Write it down. Maybe do a lot what David did, right? He goes, just write. he was writing like his real feelings. God, wipe away these transgressions. God, I need to feel love and joy again. God, I need all of these things. God, God help me. God created me a clean heart. Maybe you, maybe you write Psalm 51 like David did. Maybe you need to, to write it on toilet paper and flush it. No, don't do that. We, we don't want to waste toilet paper in this time. All right, so maybe don't do that. Uh, uh, if you've got a fire pit out back, write it down and put it in the fire pit. If there's, if there's a person that you can have a conversation with, I would encourage you with your parents. If there's something going on, your parents will love you through it and help you through it if you come to them in confessional, okay? If, if, if they catch you, it's worse. But if you come in confessional, say, God, say mom, dad, maybe it's uh, aunt, uncle, grandparent, stepmom, stepdad, whatever it is, right? Hey, I'm struggling with this sin. Can, I really need help. Are there ways that you can help me? All right. Listen, if you need to, to call me or text me or email me, something like that, look, I'd love to help you. But, but truthfully, healing comes when it comes to light. Okay. When you let things sit in darkness, and let's just be real. Right now, sitting at home consistently, every day, all day, shutting your door to your bedroom, doing your schoolwork, Okay? When you may actually be on the computer doing other things, or you may be on your phone. The, you know, the, the easy temptation to get into sin when you're by yourself is so much greater than when you're with other people. Okay, and Especially the secret sins. You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so, let, let me encourage you. Get it out. Let people know. Write it out. Listen. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And what, that, what the, the Bible is talking about there is, look, let other people pray for you. Let other people uh, encourage you. Let other, other people talk to you and, and help you get through. If you try to do it on your own, David wasn't doing it on his own. Okay, David, David needed a Nathan to call him out. Maybe, maybe this is, is, is you hearing uh, through this, this camera, the Holy Spirit calling you out in this moment, okay? All right, here's what I want to do. Listen, I want to pray for you. Again, as always, uh, you can pray uh, as well. You can put a prayer down in the, uh, in the chat as well. Let me pray for you. When I'm done praying, I'll, I'll hit a couple quick little announcements and then we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be out of here. But God, we love you. God, I do pray for these students. God, I know that every one of them struggles with a, with a secret sin. God, every one of them. God, not because... They're bad people. God, not because they're not, they're not because they're unloved, but God, because they're human and they're middle schoolers or they're high schoolers or they're elementary schoolers or, or their parents. God, all of us struggle with things that we just don't want people to know. God, David struggled with some really hard things, but God, even though David did some really, really terrible things, had somebody killed, God, he confessed those to you. and God, you used him in mighty ways. So God, I pray for these middle school students, especially for them right now, these fifth graders right now. God, if there's some things going on in their heart and life that they need to confess, God, would they confess them? God, would you, would you let them know that you can, you can clean them and you can wipe them away? Because God, you've still got great and mighty plans for, for King David 
As we're going to learn about next week, God, you've got great and mighty plans for these students. And God, would, would, would some sins and some, some mistakes that they're making now or have made, God, would that not destroy, their, destroy them, destroy their, their heart for you? God, would they not feel far away from you? God, would, they, would this moment and the writing out of this confession, God, would it, would it bring them back closer to you? God, would the end of quarantine, God, would their relationship with you be so much greater than it was before they got into it? God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, thank you again so much for uh, watching another time. Uh, next week, we're going to finish with, uh, with the making of a king, week four. Uh, super excited about that. Uh, hopefully soon, we're going to be uh, heading back together and hanging out. Listen, truthfully, we don't know. We're still waiting on what the government says when we can meet, when we can't meet. Still not exactly sure, but again, love for you guys to, uh, um, to continue to hop on. Listen. I, this between us, okay? Um, listen, there's there's a good number of you that watch this, okay? Um, but there's still a lot that aren't, and I'm concerned for them, okay? I'm concerned for for our middle school students that come on Wednesday nights typically that I don't get a chance to see um, and and haven't plugged in yet, okay? Some of you guys are in, but but you guys know friends and other people that that aren't logging on, aren't, aren't plugging in. Listen, if they if they leave church for a month or two or three. When we finally go back, there's a good chance they may not come back. So help me, okay? Help me. Tomorrow, when, when you're kind of finished your school and stuff, let's all start contacting people. Just say, hey, are you plugging in? Are you watching the church services on Saturday night or Sunday morning? You can log in a few minutes early and see Pastor Greg a little bit early, all right? Um, are you hopping on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock? We do a little Bible study. This past week, I changed it a little bit from YouTube and moved it over to a, a Google Meet so I can kind of see people, and that was a little bit of fun. And then Wednesday nights, all right? So I, I, want, I need you guys to, to be my hands and feet, my eyes and ears out there because I can't get to everybody. I need you to start getting over because we all still need God's Word in this time, okay? So if you would do me a favor and uh, you would help me reach out to people, uh, that would be super awesome and super fantastic, all right? Uh, that's all we've got for today. We love you guys. And uh, if you guys want to hang out and chat and talk, uh, not like now, like on the chat, but uh, if you guys want to hang out, text me, call me, email me. I'd love to, uh, to talk and hang out, all right? Uh, love you guys. Oh, wait, before we go, I promised I would do this. Today was Ashton Taylor's birthday. Ashton, hope you are still watching because I'm going to awkwardly sing happy birthday to you right now in front of everyone. And I'm hoping the other five or six people in my house, less than 10, all right, will, uh, uh, will sing happy birthday with me. If you are in your house, I don't care. You sing happy birthday as well to Ashton, all right? Uh, we'll all sing it real loud and maybe she can hear it, all right? Uh, if your birthday was, I'm sorry, nobody let me know, but it's actually her 14th birthday today. So we're going to sing, you ready? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Ashton, happy birthday to you. All right, we love you guys and...